So hello there and welcome to episode two of the Assignment Journey podcast brought to you by the University of Derby. This episode is all about once you've understood the question, how do you structure your assignment? How can you then from the structuring start planning what your next steps are and what your steps are going to be over the rest of the assignment? So for today's podcast, I am joined by special guest Diana. Hello there. Diana is a recent graduate from the university and is currently doing a placement with the skills team. You graduated in business management. Business management and marketing. Business management and marketing. And she's going to talk to you about what her advice was for structuring, time management and how she can plan her assignment. So that's what today's podcast is going to be. So it's going to be supported through the voices of students and through student feedback that we went that we got through social media. But first, I am Alex, so I will be with in all these parts, and I am also a member of the skills team. If you would like to watch the first part, you can find it on our Spotify, on our YouTube page, or on our skills guides. So they are both called currently Derby Uni Library, but if you just type in University of Derby, they should come up. So the first thing I want to ask about this podcast is Dana. Yeah. What would your advice be? for structuring your assignment? So, when it comes to the whole assignment, I used to use the 10%, 80%, 10% structure, Okay. which Sorry. is basically 10% is the introduction, 80% is the main body, and then 10% is the conclusion. Yeah. Um, so for example, if you got a 2,000 words assignment, I would use 200 for an introduction, 1,600 for the main body and then 200 for the conclusion. But what I need to mention is that you don't have to do exactly the same. So for example, yeah. if in your assignment context, um, 150 words introduction would work better. Don't just be desperate to reach that 200 words for the introduction. So just do whatever works for you. And it's fine if you have a smaller introduction or a bigger one, maybe 250, whatever works for you. Do you think that that structure works for you then? Yes, I think it works for me very well. And I think that, again, it depends on the assignment because sometimes, for example, I didn't need to do a conclusion. So I would use those words for recommendations instead. So I guess it goes back to the point that we raised in the previous episode of the podcast. Adapt what you do to the individual assignment in question. So, Danny, you mentioned introduction, main body, conclusion. What would you do in those parts? So could you roughly outline what you do in introduction then? So for the introduction, I would, sh I would just state what I'm going to do basically in the assignment. What is it going to be about... Um, what are the sections that I'm writing about? But I wouldn't give, like, any details of the analysis mm. that's what i would write in the conclusion yeah so the conclusion would only be like a summary of what i've already done i wouldn't bring anything new in the conclusion yeah and then in the main body i would do my actual analysis or critical analysis or whatever i need to do for the assignment really yeah and the main body is usually divided into multiple sections again depending on the assignment mm -hmm. yeah I know with my essay, my, one of my lectures summed up really nicely to me when I was a student. He said, the introduction, tell me what you're going to tell me. Mm -hmm. Main body, tell me it. Conclusion, tell me what you've told me. Yeah, this is basically... It's it's basically, it, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you say it in the most simplest way, that, that's it. So yeah, keep it simple. But in the main body, you said about adding critical analysis. Is there anything that, any structure that you could use to bring that in? I think that there is a paragraph structure called PEECL. Yeah, what's that then? So, to say it shortly, P comes from point, E from evidence, the other E is for explain, and then the C is for criticize, and then the L is for link it back to the question. So it's basically a very simple structure for each paragraph that you're doing. Yeah. So the point is basically just a simple statement or it's just stating your idea. Yeah, so and then the evidence is some primary or secondary resources to back up your point. Yep. And then the explanation is just how that evidence supports your point. I think that bit's really important, the explanation, yes. because a lot of students I've seen, when I've seen their work, what they've come to me and said is, well, what I've said to them, actually, is you haven't 
you've, you've said this point, but you haven't justified why it's relevant. And that's one of the key things. And it may be really obvious to say, well, of course it's relevant, but you just need to make sure you're explicit and you explain why it's relevant and how it links back. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's really important because that is the bit where your lecturer can actually see that you understood mm. what you're writing about when you explain it. And that's, that's a crucial thing for the mark scheme, isn't it? Yeah. It's a, yeah. Yeah, and then, and then it's just the criticized bit. If you need to really, if you need in your assignment to be critical, the, after you explain it, you can be critical by adding another piece of research and comparing it or by writing the positives and negatives mm. or stuff like that. And then link, the link bit is just making sure you're answering the question. So we yeah. link it back to what you're asked using those keywords from the question. Yes, and writing your point in the question's word and saying, basically, this is how it answers the question. Uh, we mentioned Chris's critical analysis a little bit there mm -hmm. um, later into the podcast episodes there will be an episode about writing the assignment and we will talk more in depth about this PEL structure PEECL structure and we'll talk about other parts of assignment writing that are really useful such as creating flow for example okay so basically that's a summary of structure so really what I would recommend is when you so Diana mentioned making points mm -hmm. So you've got the understanding of the assignment by asking the questions and or trying to understand it as we discussed in the last part of the podcast. Try and use that understanding to reinforce what your paragraph headings are going to be. So think about what is required of you and write them down as headings for this PEECL structure for your main body. And make sure that you include those in your introduction and conclusion. Yeah. And I think that like... When it comes to understanding the question, this is one of the most difficult bits of the assignment, actually. Yeah. So I remember when I was a student, I had moments when I didn't really get the question. I would spend like hours in the library doing nothing because I couldn't write down anything because mm. I was not sure about the question. So it just all goes back to making sure that you understand it. And if you don't, just talk to your colleagues, talk to your lecturers, talk to someone because I know it can be like a very stressful moment if you don't get that and you feel like you're sort of lost and you don't know what you're doing, but you're actually going to get it. It's just a matter of talking to other people if you need to. Mm. It really does reinforce, underpin everything, in my opinion. So I, if you haven't checked out the episode about understanding the question, go and check it out. It's already out there on the World Wide Web and on our skills guides. So part of what this podcast is all about is getting students' voices on what they, what they think their best practice is. So in this podcast, we decided to ask students, what do they do first? Do they write a structure or do they start doing their research a little bit to get some knowledge about the structure first? And then we ask them to try and justify why. So here are some student voices explaining the order that they write the structure in. What do you do first? Do you write a structure or do you research and why? So first I research my topic and then I write my structure so I can get a better understanding of the topic. First of all, I research generally into the topic area and then I write an essay structure and then from that essay structure I research more deeply into each area. Um, I do a little bit of research just to check that it is a viable project and then I will write a structure for my essay and then write the essay itself. I start by uh, researching, then after research I write the structure, then I start writing. Uh, I usually do my research first, so I read lots of journal articles and books and different things to get an idea of what I'm writing about and then that helps me structure the essay properly. So I think that's pretty overwhelming. The students all seem to agree on what they did, which is a bit, which is a surprise compared to what we expected when we were researching. So what do you think about that, Diana? I think that um, I I can relate like the most with the person that said that they are researching a little bit first, then writing a structure, then researching in depth. Yeah. Because this is what I used to do as well. Good. What is your method? Me, I try and get the understanding over the question and then I do some very very basic research just like what all the students said so actually it seems to be a tried and trusted method I would probably start by researching what we've talked about in lectures 
I would research some of the core books and I'd have a look at some of the revision guides and maybe even the Wikipedia page to try and get broad, a broad understanding of what the area is, what the topics are, what I could actually talk about before then researching in depth. Often I wouldn't actually include those sources that I've used in my bibliography, but they would help underpin the structure that I choose to start researching into. And the reason why I say Wikipedia is because actually I think it can be a good source. Because goes back to the old discussion about Wikipedia, isn't it? It's yeah. a good source if you know how to use it. Yeah. And if you don't reference it. <laughs> yeah, so it's got it basically has a broad overview of the subject. I don't trust it, I don't accept everything it says as true. But what I do is I use it to get a broad overview and it also has a lot of links to other papers in the area which can then help me understand the area, which can then help make a structure. And then that's when I start reading the quality journals and the things. But at first I use that to make the structure, to get what my heading is going to be, and to then start making a bone structure before I then start adding some proper research in. So do, what do you think about that, Diana? I think it's a good method and I think that it's... It's again very personal what works for each individual, but yeah. I also think that I find it amazing how most of us we actually do the same thing. Mm. The student voices and you and me, we are actually doing something really similar, but just slightly different. But we are also different and we learn in different ways, but still when it comes to research, we kind of do similar things. What I would say though is if you do think that there is a method which is slightly different that is good for you, use that. It's all about trying things, reflecting on them, and finding which method is best for you. In this study, currently, for this, we interviewed five students with this question, and me and Dennis, that's only seven people mm. who... So it might be because of a small data set that there's only seven, that seven people agree on that being the best method. But it could be worth trying if you haven't tried it yet. So have a try with it, see what you think, and reflect on it, and see if it is the method that works for you if you haven't tried it yet. We also got some... Um responses from social media, do we? So, we interviewed students, as Dana said, and we asked them, what are your top tips for assignment planning? And I, what we'll do is, I'll go through each tip and then we'll have a discussion about each tip. So first of all, the first thing that a student said was that they recommend starting early. Do you like start early? If I can, I do. <laughs> if I have the time to start early, I do. But I am quite busy, but it's all about trying to manage that time. So if you can start early, do it. And I'd recommend starting as early as you can, but not too early. That so makes sense. I never started really early. My starting point would hmm. be like a month before the deadline, really. It depends hmm. on the module. If it was like the dissertation one, it's been way earlier than that. But I think I would constantly do something for the assignment. I would probably start to write it a month before, but I would know things mm. from before. But I'm never going to start like in the first, I don't know, three, four weeks or something. No, it's just too early for me. I can say that there's never been a, a correlation with marks depending on how early I start it, but there is based on how late I start it. So the ones <laughs> that I've started two or three days before the deadline, I've done the worst on. The ones which I've started a month before, I've done the best. The ones which are done in a week, those results have been aver like average for me anyways. Um, but the ones I've done best on the ones which I've started, once I've started getting an understanding of the topic area, so once I've been told and had the area explained to me. And I think it also depends on the difficulty of the assignment as well, because it's not the same to write a 2,000 word piece with like a 6,000 word piece, so it just depends. Mm. The second piece of advice that we were given is to look at the learning outcomes. That all comes back down to trying to use your understanding of the question mm -hmm. and trying to get your head around it. So that's what we've discussed before. Use the learning outcomes to properly underpin your assignment. The third piece of advice is actually very similar to the first one. It says give yourself time. So what do you think that means then, Diana? It means basically somehow to start early yeah but again it's just depends on i mean it makes perfect sense for you to start in the first week if you're having a part-time job and you're also volunteering and you're also doing something thing. else it just depends on your on the things that you are usually doing and how busy you are on a daily basis so i can actually relate to this quite well actually because i know that i've now got some exams coming up and i work full time now whereas when i was a student i didn't work and so time is a completely different thing 
Mm. So I'm currently 10 days, 11 days away from my exam. And that 11 days is a lot shorter because I'm working than it was when I was a student. So 11 days as a student, when I wasn't working, well, I still am a student, 11 days when I wasn't working was a lot more hours and a lot more time than now. So actually starting early made more, makes more sense now than it did back when I was a student and when I wasn't, on, when I wasn't employed. So the next part we've got is do the research and create a plan, which is very similar to what the responses were, to so yeah. do the research before you make a plan, just to get a broad understanding of the area. Next part, colour code. Mm. Have you ever used colour code? I, uh, I personally don't think I ever used it, but if maybe for some people it works, so... I highlight things a lot, and I try to highlight the different parts of the plan, and I try to use that to get my head around things, so that could be something good. Um, maybe even colour code in different sections of research, if that's the way you organise it. Mm -hmm. And that links into the next piece of advice and the final piece of advice we got from students on social media, which was to keep notes of what you've read so far, so that you can help find your information when you need it. Did it ever happen to you to like write your whole assignment and then put all the references at the end? And you actually realise that maybe you have like 30 or 40 references to write down and it's going to take you the whole day? And you didn't talk about it. Uh, the first time I realised that was when I was doing my, I was finishing my subject on the day of the deadline. I was like, yeah, I'm done. Twelve hours left. It's fine. And then I was like, oh my word, referencing to me like eight hours. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's it's just, I mean, it's not difficult, but it's just very time consuming, and you you don't realise that until you're in the moment when you have to do it. So if if you don't want to spend eight hours. On doing referencing, then please put your references as you go. But that applies to everything, really, just to make sure you give yourself enough time in general. Mm. But I'd recommend keeping notes of what you've read so that you can find it when you're referencing, and also so you can find it when you're writing your essay. So I have a good structure, and I'll talk about what I do with structuring my research and organising it in another part of this called organising the assignment, which will come later into the assignment journey. Mm. So those were the voices of students about how they plan their assignments, but now I'm going to ask Diana how she plans hers. So Diana, how do you plan your assignment? So what I used to do is, well, it all started with me taking a notebook or my laptop mm -hmm. and creating a calendar. So I would take each assignment one by one and for example, I would write down this week I'm doing that, and next week I'm doing that, and next week I'm doing that. And it's about, it all started with me playing my time. So and then it was just me doing what I said I'm going to do in my planning timetable. So you say you plan your time. Well, mm -hmm. how, how do you work out what you need to do? So for example, uh, let's say I got a 2,000 word assignment. Right yeah. Now. What I would do first of all is I would take like a week or something for researching it. And then after I do my research and I understand the assignment and everything, I don't know how, but I have a rough idea of how long it's going to take me. Mm -hmm. So I'm always doing like, I'm, I'm setting little targets. So for example, I say on Monday, I'm going to write 300 words, but I'm not planning the hours, if that makes sense. So if mm. it's going to take me two hours to write it down, I'm going to spend two hours. But if it's going to take me 12 hours, I'm going to stay for 12 hours. Mm, it's just it. about hitting that little target for the day. That's interesting. So you plan targets based on words rather than time. Yes. That's interesting. So that way you can say, OK, I need to do 300 words a day, 300 words every on these five days, and then yes. that works. That's interesting. So that's completely different to how I would do it. I tend to write my assignments all in one day, all in one go. Yeah, for me, it's a bit different because if if I just say today I'm gonna go and stay for five hours, if I spend those five hours and don't write down anything, I just feel stressed, mm. and I just feel like I need to write down something. And yeah, to feel it's, better. <laughs> yeah, so it gives you, it makes you realize you are making an impact, making impact. Yeah, it's a it's a way of measuring my progress really. Mm. Because if I do it in hours, it's more difficult for me to measure my progress rather than if I know I have to write three hundred words. And yeah. I wrote down 200, I know I'm behind. Or if I wrote 400, I know I'm good. So my, my method actually is slightly stressful. Um, and I have been slightly <laughs> stressed out when doing mine in the past. But I'm, and this is what I'm probably my biggest weakness is with doing assignments. I don't like starting to write. 
I don't like, I don't ever want to start. And so what I do is I do productive procrastination and I do more and more research to avoid starting writing until I physically have to. That's that's the hardest part to start to write, isn't it? Because mm. after you start it, then you got a few words there and you got your idea. It's it really flows. easy. Yeah. But so yeah, I don't like starting to write. So basically, I find every excuse to write it without writing it. So like, I do my research, I organize my research, I basically plan the write it into a structure, and then when I write, it doesn't take me very long. So I'm not. So that's why it just seems like a lot when I say I write all my essay in one go or in one chapter at a time. Potentially it depends on how big it is. But actually, I've done all the groundwork, and often I've got way too many words because I've spent far too long procrastinating before I write it. But it is, doesn't feel as if I've made as much progress, so I feel like, oh wow, I've done not much, but then it all comes together really quickly once I do it, once I start writing it. But it's about getting over that urge to start writing. Yeah, That's so what it's I again with. whatever works for each individual. Mm. I'm, so I'm gonna be, if I'm stressing out and I don't know how how am I doing I, I, it's, it's just gonna be very difficult for me to write down but yeah I would never plan until the last day so I would set so if for example if I got a certain date with my yeah. deadline I would always set my deadline again like one week before the okay. actual deadline why because that's gonna help me in case of any emergency or things that I need to do and we're yeah. not part of the plan. So maybe, for example, if I get sick, yeah. I need to see a doctor or I can't write down because I'm sick or yeah. something. I just have time to recover or maybe, I don't know, if something happens, it's just life. Mm. Whatever situation, either good or bad, maybe, maybe my friend is gonna tell me she's getting married so I need to attend the wedding. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. it might also reduce stress <laughs> yeah. and things like that. It also might give you time to do your other assignments more so yeah. that you can help balance that a little bit. And also to have a few days to read again my assignment because it's amazing how many mistakes I spot after a few days. Yes. If I read after a few days, because if I read it like now, if I just finish it and I read, I'm not going to notice anything. But then if I leave it for a few days, it's just amazing how many things I change. So it's all about planning it so that you have time to proofread it with fresh yeah. eyes. Again, we're going to talk more in depth about proofreading in the proofreading part of the podcast, which is in line with referencing as well. Um, but yeah, it's all about giving yourself that time that you can do it. So plan that time in, try and do it early. I know that when I've submitted my work on the last day, I've then gone, how have I not noticed those mistakes? Mm -hmm. But if I had the time and planned it as well as Diana did, maybe I would have been able to spot those and eradicate them. Yeah. Because it is quite embarrassing when you've been given one piece of feedback and it's just, you made these five spelling mistakes here. You know what, I don't even want to read my assignments from my first year, first semester. I don't even want to read them. You might be good to reflection to reali and to realise how far you've come. No. <laughs> um, I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> do you think that you can ever over an assignment, Diana? Well, I think that... Oh, this is a funny question, and I think that it's actually from you to you. Because <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I, I don't tend to overplan things, but um, what do you think about it? I know I can overplan <laughs> things, that's so why I'm asking it. Um, uh, if you spend too long planning, you mm -hmm. might be procrastinating from actually doing it. So I think if I started writing mine earlier, potentially, I would have saved time that I could spend on other assignments. But I plan and plan and plan and plan, and sometimes it, the, it is important to plan, but over time the impact of that planning decreases the more time you spend doing it. So if you spend like I mean, a few weeks just working out what your next steps are, is that proportional? Is it worth the time that you spent? So try and make sure that you don't over plan to plan to a reasonable amount that you can structure everything, you know what you're going, you know what your next steps are, but make sure you're actually doing the research and not just thinking about what research you can do or doing the writing and leaving yourself that time to proofread it. Because with my method, I don't have the extra days to proof, to check it with fresh eyes, whereas that could be more beneficial to me than that two days I did planning it extra. Yeah, and I think that, again, something that's really important for the plan is to be flexible. Mm. Because I always like make an initial plan but it's never ending up exactly as I made it initially. Because maybe one day I'm not able to write, so I need to say, okay, this is gonna move and I'm gonna finish in that date. But it's always about, 
I would probably take like about two hours to do my initial plan and then a few minutes to modify it whenever needed as I go. But yeah, it's just about being flexible as I, well. I think that's really important, being flexible. Um, it helps, again, as Dan said earlier, about if you've got something that comes up, a family, a family illness, you getting ill, you can still be there and your assignment can still be done without having to take the EEC procedure, which can cause other issues to other assignments as a knock-on effect. So planning it early and trying to get it done early can be important. Dana, have you ever heard of something called backwards planning? I think I, I have a roughly idea about what it is, but I don't think I ever used it. Okay, because it's something I use quite a lot. So I think it's like starting from the deadline and planning backwards. Until yeah. The day that you're actually... So I do something similar to that, but what I do is I plan the end goal. Mm -hmm. So I look at what my assignment should be if it's perfect. So I think, okay, the perfect assignment will have all these outcomes involved. Okay, how can I plan to achieve those? So for example, one of the criteria, which again, you will have understood from your understanding of the question, for example, could be wider reading. So they want me to evidence wider reading. Well, how can I do that? So then when I plan my research, I can then spend some time researching in journals or trying to find sources which I know that I haven't been given or that other students might not have used. So I try and be creative and think, okay, how can I do that goal? And I plan backwards. So my perfect essay will include critical analysis. Okay, which parts of the, my assignment can I have that in? Where should I put that in? Okay, well, I've got one source in this paragraph. Do you think I should need more on the others? And so I start asking myself these questions and look at what the perfect assignment would be and say, how can I be that perfect assignment by looking backwards? And then I can plan backwards of how I can achieve those elements. Okay, that sounds really interesting. I never used that method, but um, I might give it a try. You might give it a try. Yeah? Yeah, good. So that is roughly it for planning and also roughly it for the podcast in, to in total so we've talked a little bit about how you can manage your time when you're time managing your planning we've talked about um, also how you can write a structure but ultimately it's about trying to find a method that works for you you can take the advice that we've given or you can use your own advice because there is no right or wrong way to do this but it's just about trying, reflecting and learning about it. So Dan, have you got anything else that you'd like to add? No, I think that was all for me. Um, I would just like to say thank you guys for listening. And if you need any help, just... Email library at derby.ac.uk So, the next episode of The Assignment Journey is now that you've got your structure, how can you use this structure as a basis for researching your assignment and also for evaluating your sources. So in the next part, we will be joined by the academic librarian team who will be explaining how they think or what their advice is for researching. So tune into that part. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much, Vidana, for being our special guest today. For listening. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for listening and thank you, Vidana, for being my special guest. See you in the next part.